Hey y'all, happy Palm Sunday. So for me as a Christian, this is truly the most celebrated time of year. Okay, Christmas, I love Christmas. I'm all about Christmas and Jesus' birth and happy birthday, Jesus. But Easter, y'all, Easter for a Christian should be the greatest celebrated holiday because he's risen and that's what it's all about. We have hope and joy and, and our faith in, in solid in Jesus Christ. Well, I wanna share with you today, bring about my little teacher vibe, a science experiment and a Bible lesson that I shared Wednesday night with my Awanas, kindergarten through second grade. And I don't care what age you are, you're gonna get something out of this. I want you to walk away knowing that everything, praise the Lord. Everything, praise the Lord. God created everything. And this is a little something you can share with your littles as well. So Palm Sunday is approaching. And so we go to the book of Luke. And in Luke 19, starting at 28 through 44, let me read this story for you really fast. And of course, I could go off on so many little tangents because there's so many great little tidbits of information in here. But we're going to pause. We're going to pause because... Um, whenever we get down into it, we're going to talk about how even the rocks cry out. And that is what this whole lesson is about. The rocks crying out. So listen up. Here we go. It says in verse 28, after telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Beth Bethany, on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. And here's what it says. This is in red letters, so Jesus said it. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and they found the colt and they did just as Jesus said. So yeah, I am going to stop here at this little nugget because Jesus told them to do something. They could have said, what are you talking about? Well, we're supposed to go where? Get a donkey that nobody um, has ever ridden? How are we going to know that? And, and we're just going to take it? No questions asked? What? This is crazy, Jesus. Are you kidding me? So how many times really in our lives do you feel the nudging and God telling you to, to do something or lead you down this path and you're like, seriously, are you crazy? What's going on? But he's got a purpose and he has a plan and you just need to obey. And that's what they did. They just obeyed. So here it goes. It says, so they went, they found the colt, just as Jesus said, and sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt. So evidently, the owner didn't even ask any questions after that either. So they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their garments over it for him to ride on, kind of like a saddle. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles he had seen. Now remember, not too many days later, these people are not going to be singing praises. They might be hushed or they might be saying crucify him. Heartbreaking. Here we go, verse 38. They're shouting, blessings to the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest of heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. And don't we have people today, y'all? Don't we have people today telling us, you know, hush up about your Jesus. Christians are getting pushed down. But y'all, don't. Look up, rise above. That's what we've got to do. Jesus replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. And so it can, we can go on right there, but I'm just going to stop and share this experiment with you. So what I did with the kids, I said, okay. So the people, if they're told that they're going to hush, but even the rocks will cry out. Well, let's go. And we're gonna fill this. And maybe I should take the top off to make it go a little faster. But we're gonna fill this with some hydrogen peroxide. 
So I'm going to put hydrogen peroxide, three-fourths cup. And then I asked the kids, okay, how many days was it till Jesus rose again? And they said, three days. I said, okay, I'm going to take my dish soap and I'm going to pump one, two, three. I'm going to pump three pumps in there and we're going to stir it up a little bit. So after it's all stirred up, and then I'm going to put the rocks in. So the rocks are in here. We can stir it up a little bit more if we want to. Make sure that all the rocks are in there. You can hear them. But we had not really heard them yet. We're going to wait. We're going to hear these rocks cry out. So then you take some warm water. You take some yeast. And as you put that yeast in there and you stir this up, and then you're gonna let it sit for about a minute. So while it's sitting, I'm asking the kids, okay, so if Jesus was coming to your town, what is something that you would say? What is something you would say? So they all started just shouting out. Well, they didn't shout out. I called out one at a time on this part. I said, what would you say? So somebody said, I would invite someone to church and say, my Jesus is coming, come meet him. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was precious. That's so what we're supposed to do, invite others to church. And then others were saying, um, here comes the Lord. Here comes my savior. One of them was pretty much scripture and talking about um, hallelujah and praising the Lord and coming down. I mean, it was like he was reading the scripture straight out. These kids were just so precious. But they were singing praises to the God. And so then, after about a minute, we were ready to go. And so I said, all right, well, now let's see what the rocks are going to say. Because what if we have to remain silent? And that's what those people out there in the world, y'all, a lot of times, they want us to remain silent. So what are we going to do? Because we're told in Psalms, I think it's 148, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that and put it in my written portion. But we're talking about how all these things praise God. The skies praise God. The, the water from the sky praises God. The oceans praise the God. The skies praise God. The birds praise God. Everything praises God. The mountains praise God. All of that praise God. And then also another little tidbit we added is I added some red food coloring for effect. I said, okay. I said, well, why am I adding the red? And they said, because Jesus is blood. Y'all, these kids are so smart and they're so precious. But I hadn't even got to the heavenly part yet. That just brought tears to my eyes and gave me chills all down me. So whenever I pour this in, we talk about how the rocks are crying out like a volcano. You couldn't keep them silent. So at this point, I told the kids, I said, okay, everybody at one time, tell me what you would say if Jesus was coming. And they all started shouting all these precious names, singing praises to God. I had chills all down my skin. And I was like, y'all, this is what heaven is going to be like one day. This is what heaven's going to be like with everybody at the feet of Jesus and just like angels just praising the Lord. Y'all, I just pray that whatever is going on in your world, whether it's school or work or your community, just turn on the news and see how Christians are just getting persecuted in so many various ways. Everything, praise the Lord. Don't let anything stop it because if you're going to be quiet, Someone else is going to cry out and sing praises to the Lord or something else. Now, the rocks may not literally be crying out for him, but God created it. And everything God created, praise the Lord. And he loves you. He made you in his image. And I just pray that you have a wonderful Palm Sunday. And look for the written portion, and I'll make sure I include that Psalms in here about what all praises the Lord you're not alone. Have a beautiful day. God loves you. I love you. And never be ashamed of your Savior. Have a great day. Take care.